Let's go to inning number five, and once again, here's Ron Fairley. Okay, thank you very much, Wayne, and it'll be Robbie Thompson, the leadoff batter. Robbie struck out his only time up, and the first pitch of the inning by Scott is high and outside, ball one. One ball and no strikes. Giants came up with two runs in the first inning. A home run by Kevin Mitchell, a double by Aldretti, and a double by Candy Maldonado. And that has been the Giants' offense here this evening. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Thompson swings through a fastball and misses it for a strike, one along. The Astros came back in the third inning, a base hit by Glenn Davis and a double by Craig Reynolds. That produced their run. And so it is 2-1 Astros, 2-1 to one Giants, rather, over the Astros. Next pitch to Robbie, swung on and popped up foul behind home plate. That's going to go in the upper deck. For Robbie, on the road this year, he has been batting right around 265, 260, somewhere in that neighborhood. Including three home runs and 20 runs driven in. The one-two delivery on the way, and Thompson slaps one foul down the right field side, well back in the crowd, and so the count will remain at one ball and two strikes. You know that Roger Craig is keeping a very close eye on Mike Scott looking for scuffed baseballs here this evening. And one advantage that he has, that is Scott, as the next pitch is a curveball called strike three. And Robbie is caught with his bat on the shoulder. Second strikeout in the game for Mike Scott. And that will bring up Jose Uribe. And for Mike Scott, he has now set down 12 in a row. Scott comes into this game with 207 strikeouts. That is second in the National League to his teammate, Nolan Ryan, who will be going in the final game of this series. Ryan has 210. Here is Jose. He bounced out to second his only time up. And he swings and another big bouncer to second base. On one big hop, Dorn to Davis. And just like that, Jose Uribe is rounded out for the second straight time. 13 in a row. And brings up the pitcher, Mike Lacoste. But getting back just for a second to Mike Scott. The first time we mentioned that he pitched against the Giants this year. And there is strike one to Lacoste. Which right here in Houston, he scuffed up the baseball quite a bit. And every one of the baseballs went over into the Houston dugout. Roger did not have a chance to see or check any of the baseballs. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss, strike two. The second time that Scott faced the Giants was in San Francisco. The balls have to go into the home dugout. And so we're having very close examination of Mr. Scott here this evening. The 0-2 pitch. Waved out and missed strike three, an easy inning. Scott strikes out his second in the inning, and it's one, two, three, and down go the Giants. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base, and so we go to the bottom of the fifth. Giants leading the Astros two to one. For the Astros, we go to their half of the fifth inning. It'll be Craig Reynolds followed by Scott, the pitcher, and then Gerald Young. Giants swing it two to one. There's the throw down to second base. Just a reminder that when the Giants conclude this road trip, they're going to play three games here in Houston. They'll have an off day on Thursday and then three against the Cincinnati Reds in Cincinnati. But they're going to come back for a very important homestand. They'll have two games against the San Diego Padres on the 14th and 15th at Candlestick Park. And then on the 16th and 17th against Houston. And then on the 19th, 20th, a two-game series against Cincinnati. And then closing out, the upcoming homestand will be a three-game series against the Dodgers on the 21st, 22nd, and 23rd. Hope you make your plans to join us at Candlestick Park. The Giants and use your support. There's a pitch that is outside for ball one, one and all. Oh. He's playing some of these games on the road, and sometimes those fans can be a little intimidating. So far, the Giants playing quite well on the road this year. They've been able to hold their own. Here is the 1-0 pitch, and that just misses outside ball two. Craig Reynolds, we told you, has been wearing Mike Lacoste out. One of those things that just happens to occur in the game of baseball. Lacoste ready. Here's the 2-0 pitch in the way, and it is over the plate but low, and the count is now 3-0. Three balls and no strikes. And the 3-0 pitch is 
He's high and inside and spinning out of the way is Craig Reynolds. And that is the third base on balls issued in the game by Mike Lacoste. And so the Astros have the tying run at first base and the pitcher coming to the plate and one would have to think, have to think right here anyway that they're going to have the sacrifice on and have Scott try to move Reynolds over to second. Coming down the line at third is Kevin is Kevin Mitchell. Lacoste comes set. Scott around the button. He pops it up and Clark lets it hit the ground and they go to second for one and they're going to go back to first to double play. Mike Scott did not run the ball out and the Giants for the first time this year had a bunted ball popped up in the air and they made the play correctly. Clark very alertly let the ball hit the ground and they went to second for one on to first and they turned the double play. Uh, 158 double plays turned on the year. Clark that time. Clark that time and now Scott thinks he's safe. <laughs> Clark, <laughs> not Clark, but Scott thinks he's safe at first base. Put a helmet on, was standing down there at first, and the umpire said, Mike, get off the field, you're out. <laughs> so that goes 1-6-4 in the double play. The Astros now leading it by a score of 3-2 to two as we go to the Giants' half of the eighth inning, and it will be a pinch hitter, Chili Davis, will be batting for Robbie Thompson. On deck is Jose Ribe, and then the pitcher spot will have another pinch hitter there, I'm sure. Here's the pitch by Chile, and he takes one over for a call, strike one. Chile batting 238 against the league. They play him straight away. Mike Scott has been absolutely dominating since the first inning. He has not given up the hit since then. Chile swings and misses a curveball. That might have been the split fingered fastball, and now he's behind the count 0 2. For Mike Scott, he has retired the last 20 that he has faced. In the first inning, after Milner flied out deep to center field, Mitchell hit a home run, Aldretti doubled, and Candy doubled. Since then, Scott has been perfect. Fastball, low and outside, one ball and two strikes. Cincinnati won their game against the Dodgers. The Giants, with 28, come from behind victories this year. Well, it pretty much figured that this would be a low-scoring game. After all, both the Giants and the Astros, here's the one-two pitch, swung on and fouled along the first base side. And the count remains at one and two. After all, the Giants and the Astros are one-two in the National League in ERA. One ball and two strikes. On deck is Jose Ribe. Swing and a foul tip, and Ashby cannot hold on to it. And so Chile stays alive. One of the things that the Astros have had had a little trouble doing in recent games, and that is getting two out base hits, but it was a two out base hit here this evening that has tied the game. Here's the one-two pitching away, and Chile swings and fouls it down the left field side. Well back into the crowd, and so the count is still one ball and two strikes. For Chile Davis, he has hit the best for the Giants away from Candlestick Park. On the road, Chile has hit 13 home runs and driven in 45. Here's the one-two pitch, and it just misses. Whoa, that was a close pitch. Two and two. Two balls and two strikes. That was a curveball that just went around the plate that time. And like we say, that did not miss by much. Scott staring down now ready. Here's the 2-2 delivery on the way. Swung on, hit sharply on the ground to shortstop. Reynolds playing him perfectly. Throw a bit high, but Davis pulls it down. 21 in a row now. Set down by Mike Scott. And that brings up the shortstop, Jose Uribe. Uribe is now being called back, and it will be a pinch hitter. And it will be Harry Spillman batting for Jose. So Harry loosening up on the on-deck circle.
circle. And right now, Scott just standing out there in the mound. He seems to have everything in control. Astros leading it three to two. Three runs on seven hits. The Giants, two runs on three hits. They have committed one error. For Spillman, he is 11 for 54 as a pinch hitter. He's hit a home run and driven in 10 runs this year, coming off the bench. Left-handed hitter. And the first pitch to him is over the plate, but low for ball one. On deck is Joel Youngblood. He will be batting for Leopards. The 1 0 pitch in the way. Spillman taking all the way. Pitch is over for a strike, 1 1. One ball, one strike. No changes defensively other than going in the ballgame and playing third base is Ken Caminiti. Here's the 1 1 pitch. And Spillman lays off the pitch and it misses for ball two. And for Caminiti, he will be batting in the number three spot in the lineup. Other than that, that's it. Two balls, one strike. Scott winds and the 2 1 delivery on the way. Swung on and bounced foul on one or two hops off of the front edge of the Astros dugout. Two and two. The Giants once again getting off to a good start here in the first inning. But then after that, someone turned off the power to them. They have done nothing. 2-1 pitch just outside. Make that the 2-2 pitch just outside, and it's now 3-2. So it is a full count, 3-2 to Spillman. In fact, the Giants have not had a base runner since the first inning. 3-2 pitch on the way. Spillman swings and rolls it sharply to the ground to first. Up with it is Davis. He tags first. And that is 22 in a row set down by Scott. And now coming to the plate, pinch hitter Joel Youngblood. He will be batting for Leopards. Youngblood on the year has done a good job. Coming off the bench, he is 12 for 42. He has more hits than anyone coming off the bench for base hits. And including that, he has hit three home runs coming off the bench. It is a one-run game. They could use one right here. Young Bud getting a toe hold into batter's box. On deck is Milner. Scott ready. And the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Out in front of the curveball. Kind of on one. Young blood waiting. Scott not wasting any time now. Comes back to the 0-1 pitch. Sails high and outside. One ball and one strike. Mike Scott trying to nail down his 15th victory of the year. Has pitched a fine game. He came in this game fifth in the National League in ERA and fourth in wins. 1-1 one, one pitch. Swing and a miss at a high fastball and it's 1-2. and two. Scott very dominating here this evening. He has had his trouble since the All-Star break. He's only won four of nine decisions. A young blood picking up a handful of dirt. And now out of the dugout comes Roger Craig. As we said earlier, Roger was going to have and ask to see if the baseball would not be checked. And the baseball has been thrown in. And Roger is asking the umpire to check the baseball. And that is exactly what Charlie Williams is doing. And now with that, out comes Lanier, and it is going to be John Kibler and John Williams, or Charlie Williams, inspecting the baseball. And now they went out, and they're trying to check to see Mike Scott. They're going out. Mike Scott walked off the mound and did something off of the mound as if to get rid of the sandpaper or something.
and stuffed it down his shirt. And now he's got his hand in his back pocket. And Roger is asking the umpires to check Mike Scott. He made, he made a move towards second base. And he put something, it looked like he put something down his shirt. I don't know. But he put his hand down his shirt. I don't know what he had in his hand. And the umpires are now going to go out and check him. Bruce Fremming is checking Mike Scott. And they have checked his glove, and apparently he's okay. But did they check his hand? Did they check his hand? And now Hal Lanier is going to complain about Roger Craig going out and complaining. Ron, you brought up the perfect point about as soon as Mike Scott had thrown the ball in, he started to walk off the mound over behind first and second base in that area. Roger Craig was watching him like a hawk, and so were the Giants players. In fact, Jose Morales, the batting coach, and also about five Giants were screaming out to the second base umpire, Bruce Fremming, to watch Mike Scott. And he did exactly what you said. And I think Roger pushed the issue so much that he wanted Scott to do something like that, was watching him and baited him by getting that ball thrown in. And when he turned his back on the Giants, they were going absolutely crazy. So now Mike Scott is asking the home plate umpire, give me the ball. I want this game to get back underway. And now the umpires, Kibler and Charlie Williams are in a conference they're going to call the other umpires around. Apparently, the ball that they took out of the game, they still have in their hand, and that may be scuffed up. And now the umpires are starting to walk off towards first base. They're going to have a meeting. They're going to discuss a couple of things. Lanier standing nearby. Roger over on the third base side of things, staying out of the way. They are inspecting the baseball. And at the same time, they are discussing what they should do. And you can hear the fans say, let's play ball. Obviously, the fans here are very partial. And they have a baseball that is all scuffed up. And Kibler is pointing it to Lanier. And Lanier is a little bit upset right now. And wouldn't this be something if they were to eject Scott from the game? Scott another baseball to throw and Roger is waiting for the decision of the umpires and now one of the umpires I want to say Jim Quick is going over to the giant dugout and is hollering at somebody over there because apparently somebody in the giant uniform is all over the umpire it is Mike Lacoste Mike Lacoste and Candy Maldonado also involved in that. But Lacoste came up and kind of pushed two Giants to the side and just kind of parted the Red Sea and wanted to scream out of the umpire. And now Candy's coming out of the dugout by a few feet. And Lacoste, once again, is hollering a great deal to the umpires. The umpires are still talking with Lanier. Lacoste has just requested Don Zimmer and Roger Craig to come over and he is telling them something about Mike Scott. So now Roger is going to go out and talk to the umpires. I think he's going to ask them to inspect him one more time. Well, we told you that this had the earmarks of this very same thing early in the game. And now Roger is going to talk with Charlie Williams, the home plate umpire. The umpires are going back to their respective positions, it appears. But Roger, obviously, a little bit upset because apparently, when you look at this game, not to take anything away from Mike Scott, he is a very fine pitcher. But it is interesting that when the ball are kept by the umpires and they throw him out of the game on the Houston side. His record at home, the Astros record at home versus Lenard the Road. And the thing that's driving Roger Craig crazy is the fact that Scott turned his back and did exactly what you said. It looked like he was stuffing something down his shirt. Now Roger may get ejected here. He is 
complaining where he had taken and he's arguing right now with the umpire. He may go any second. All four of them are arguing with Roger. But he is not going to win this argument. And see you later, Roger. He's not leaving. They have heard enough from Roger Craig as he has been ejected from the game. And once again, as Scott had the baseball inspected, he threw the ball to the catcher. He threw it in the dirt, number one, and then proceeded to walk off towards second base and put his hand down his shirt and later on his throwing hand put in his pocket. He has not done that all night long.
think they're inspecting it about four or five innings too late. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Swing and a miss and a breaking ball. Down goes Kevin Mitchell. That is 25 in a row. Set down. Strikeout number five. That was a curveball. And that brings up the left fielder, Mike Aldretti. And the Giants are down to their final out. Cincinnati has won their game. They won extra innings against the Dodgers. And they won that by a score of three to two. I believe it was in 12 innings. Scott Wines with the pitch to Aldretti. On the outside corner, strike one. Of the remaining 22,974 here at the Astrodome, they are now on their feet. Scott Wines, the 0-1 pitch. Aldretti takes low, and the count is 1-1. Aldretti, 1 for 3. He doubled and scored in the first inning. Outfield, shading slightly around toward left. Maldonado on deck. The 1-1 pitch. Check swing. Did he go around? The appeal, yes. And the count is 1-2. and two. One ball and two strikes to Aldretti. And their crowd in the background. The one-two pitch. Way outside, two and two. A victory by the Astros would reduce the Giants' lead to four and a half games in the Western Division. Ashby with the signs, the two-two pitch. Swung on and fouled back out of play off to our left. Count remains at two and two. Four two Astros. Aldretti waiting. The two two pitch. Swung on a miss, strike three, and the game is over. Twenty six in a row. Retired by Scott. win the first game of this series four to two we'll be back with the totals in just a moment